Jake is looking jacked for this new movie Roadhouse. His coach is going to guide us through his training and diet, so we can see what he actually did to get in this exceptional shape. We spend a few minutes each session moving, trying to get the core body to mature up before moving into some sort of mobility, which you see here with the stick, which is a great tool to help increase range of motion. I love how they include these tips, like anyone is actually going to do this exercise. There are some studies saying that static stretching can negatively affect your resistance training if you use it as a warm-up. Usually you want to do this after the workout, but ah, it's not a big deal. Proteus is an amazing piece of equipment used mostly by performance centers to help train athletes in every plane of motion and also to help increase power production. We use it primarily for priming the nervous system, proprioception, learning movement patterns, and a lot for warming up joints and metabolic training. Lots of fancy words. What he's saying here is that he's basically just warming up for his workout by using these movements that can translate well into boxing skills. He's playing a fighter in this movie, so it makes sense that he's doing these types of drills. Isometrics are a staple here at Rise Movement. We use them all the time to help increase strength and stamina at different joint angles. Okay, this is a good exercise if you want to waste your time in the gym. We have three types of contraction. Concentric, eccentric and isometric. In this case, concentric would be pulling all the way to contract your back muscles. Eccentric would be going all the way down to stretch those back muscles. And finally, isometric, the one that Jake is doing here, is just holding the same position without any movement. We know that out of these three types of contraction, the isometric is the least effective one. That's why it doesn't make sense to start your workout with the least effective exercise. You want to do the exact opposite of that. You are the strongest at the beginning of the workout, which is why you want to allocate all of that energy towards the stuff that actually works, like actual row, for example. Most of the sets that we do are time sets. We try to keep his work capacity up, keep him moving, keep him sweating, keep burning fat. We still want the heavy stimulus, so we do a lot of heavy sled work. All right, this is a tough exercise, although I don't see where they're going with this workout. Let's see what's next. Getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Stress, adapt, recover, on repeat for well over a year. That's discipline. That's patience. That's commitment. I'm sitting, I'm sitting in here and I feel a lot of gratitude, but I know that's, I know that's a crazy thing to say. Okay, that's all good, but why are we seeing this in the middle of the freaking workout? We always keep the heavy primitive work one way, shape or form, whether it's squats or deadlifts and the variations thereof, we want to keep the muscle coordination at a high. So finally, they decided to do some normal exercise now that he's tired from doing all of the unnecessary BS. Okay, I like the bar that they are using for the squats. There's something about it that it can really put you in a comfortable position where you can focus on the exercise. He's doing three to four sets. That's nice. Reps are a little bit too low for the squats, but it's all right. They're finally getting it done. Grip work is essential as it seems to be one of the limiting factors in the gym. We pepper in various exercises to keep grip tight. And here it says that forearm strength also correlates heavily to longevity. It's true. There are some studies that actually support that statistically. However, you ain't increasing your lifespan just by training your forearms, but you do increase it by doing cardio. Anyways, look at Jake here. He looks ripped. They ain't doing this exercise for no longevity. They're doing it for the camera, obviously. Here we see some examples more relatable to MMA training, keeping the body in check with offset loading and movements more imperative to sport. Okay, more legs and core training. A little bit of MMA. This workout is getting tough when it comes to endurance. It does make sense how this could benefit him with his role as a fighter, I guess. It's important to keep the stimuli broad with variations of reps, sets, loads, and different tempos. What else would you do, bro? Seems like they're using this pressing variation because he's having some sort of issues with his shoulder joints. In that case, limiting his range of motion by doing it on the floor does make sense. And by using this bar, he can choose grip that feels more comfortable for him. I assume that's what's going on here. The diet part of this is really 
critical, critical for maintaining and looking a certain way. It's not something that's sustainable, but it can be done with the right people in place. There's a big team that helped get us through this. He does look really shredded and for that diet is the key. I like that he mentioned that it's not sustainable because for most of the people it's not going to be realistic to maintain such low body fat percentage. Alright, time for some weighted push-ups with these cool chains on his back. Another exercise that looks showy. Although I have nothing against weighted push-ups, I'm slowly becoming skeptical about whether this is his actual workout or just some random video that will work well with the YouTube algorithm. Cross-lateral loading is very important to all sports, especially the MMA fight training. These come in various forms, but this is one of my favorites. Yeah, man, another exercise that would go viral on TikTok. And how long is this workout already? I'll be late for my date if this keeps going like this. We keep things in balance with push-pull rips, followed by my favorite, some primitive climbing sprints to finish him off. Okay, okay, at this point, even I'm tired just from watching him do all these exercises. This was a very weird full body workout. The exercise sequencing didn't really make much sense to me. For example, getting warmed out before going for the squats or random grip training in the middle of the workout and those ISO holds in the beginning. It just seems like they were randomly throwing some exercises together. When he started talking about the diet, then I thought, okay, that's it. The workout is over. I thought it was a relatively good workout at least compared to the average men's health video. But then they kept going with all these other fancy stuff. If your main goal is not preparing for a movie role as an MMA fighter, this workout makes zero sense for you. Even for Jake, it doesn't make much sense to train this way, at least in my opinion. I don't believe that this is how he actually trains, but hey, no, nobody cares about the basic workouts anymore. Now it's all about looking cool for the camera and talking nonsense to place high in the eyes of the algorithm. Anyways, here I got a video about Michael P. Jordan's workout for Creed. And here I've explained Christian Bale's most iconic body transformation. See you somewhere over there. Bye bye.